and welcome to Loud Creations. Today I am making some mead. I have a lot of my stuff ready already. Um, this mead is for the new moon in Capricorn, and then I will be racking it and adding some more elements to it uh, around the full moon in Cancer. So I'm doing these on the moon cycle just to help me pick out ingredients and get creative about the different herbs and stuff that I'm using. And so, oh, and also to keep me on some sort of schedule because otherwise it just gets all wonky. Long story short, I'm making a ginger lemon or lemon ginger mead for the Capricorn cancer polarity. And you know, we just had the winter solstice and all the other related holidays around that. And we just entered Capricorn season. So I'm really excited for this mead. And what I am using today is I'll be adding, I made a ginger tea, a strong ginger tea. I used about half a hand of ginger and I steeped it in 16 ounces of water for about a half hour, 45 minutes. So long time. Smells wonderful. Here it is. Oh my gosh. I also, because my honey that I had gotten from a beekeeper, a local beekeeper, had kind of crystallized. And so I went ahead and put my honey into this container along with the tea and mixed it up. I don't know if it's totally mixed, but so we're going to do that. I'm Today I am doing a gallon and a half because I have run out of one gallon carboys and I think I'm going to like this one, so I'm going to make a gallon and a half. So this has, uh, what was it, 4 pounds and 14 ounces of honey in it. Could be overkill. Uh, I was going to put 3.25 or 3 and a quarter or 3 pounds, what is that, 3 pounds 4 ounces for a gallon. And so I just did the math and ended up with 4 pounds 14 ounces of honey. And... I will be adding, I'm not doing any lemon juice for fermentation. I'll be adding the lemon for secondary, but I do have some lemon peel that I'm going to put in there because I like to do that. And let's see, today I am using my EC1118 yeast and we'll be adding go firm and more cold water. And that's it. So I'm going to, unless I'm forgetting, I feel like it's, it feels too easy today. I don't know why. Anyway, I have this glass. I'm going to go ahead and pour some of this sweet liquid, and it's still really warm. And from what I read, Go Firm likes, likes it warm. So I'm going to set my tea over there. So I have my glass, and I'm going to add, well, so for a gallon, you would add a gram or approximately a quarter teaspoon of go firm. And I think uh, a gram and a half would be like a third of a teaspoon. So I'm going to eyeball it. I hope that's okay. And I'm going to just add that in. So I'm using my little Christmas tin to keep all of my, all my powders for mead making. All right. So I'm going to get my, I'm going to use the half teaspoon and I'm just going to do a little less than a half of a teaspoon. And what did I do with my spoon spoon? I took my spoon out of here. Well, I'll figure it out. Okay, so I'm going to get this go firm going and then I will start putting the honey and tea mixture into the carboy. Okay, so there's all that. I'm going to, I guess I'll just use my measuring spoon to stir this because I forgot my spoon somewhere. This works. Okay, so that's all set, and I'm going to set it aside here. Oh. All right, so here comes the fun part. <sighs> okay, 
my carbide. There are still, I don't know if you can see that. So I was using Iostar, which is iodine based, and then now I'm using star sand sanitization fluid. Try to dump some of this out. Well, I don't know what to do about that. There's still some bubbles in here. This has been sitting for quite a while drying. So I'm just, <laughs> I believe that star sand is safe because it's watered down to a safe level and uh, it's a no rinse sanitization fluid. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pour this in there and hope for the best and maybe do a little research afterwards. <laughs> but anyway, um, I found a giant funnel at the brew shop. I'm so excited. All right, here we go. I'm back with some foamy. I don't know if that's from the star sand or if it's from just the, the tea and the honey. Anyway, I am going to be adding filling this up with water. I'm not going to do what I did last time, which was I filled it up with water. Then I added my slurry, which was the go firm and the yeast, and it was too much for the carboy. Okay, so next I have some lemon peel that I'm going to put in here. And I'm kind of a just put whatever I think I should put in there. These are all, oh, I smell so good. I smell like lemon drops. I mean, there's one. These are teeny tiny, so I'm going to put a few in there. And then because this is going to be a lemon ginger mead, I will be adding lemon in secondary. So I kind of put a lot of lemon peels. I usually don't put quite that many in, but uh, I would say that is the zest of I would, I don't know, half a lemon, three quarters of a lemon, depending on the size of the lemon. Sometimes they're small. Um, let's see. I'm going to go get some cold water to put in my jug to fill this up and to help cool this off a little bit so we don't kill the yeast. I'll be right back. I'm back with my water. I'm going to put, I'm going to put a little bit in just just pour it. See how this works out for me. All right. I'm going to leave a little bit of space so so that when I pour this, pour the slurry in, I don't repeat history. Well, so I'm going to have to let the go firm sit for a little bit. And then I'm going to add the yeast and let that sit for a little bit. So, and I'm going to go ahead and just add the whole packet. Uh, I think I probably only need about half the, half a packet for a gallon and a half of mead. But I end up just pouring the whole thing in almost every time. So I'm just going to do that. But I'm going to wait till the go firm gets going. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. Well, we're not going to take a gravity reading. While I'm waiting for the Go Firm to do its thing, uh, I thought I would talk a little bit about the ingredients that I picked and why I picked them. And then in my secondary videos, when I get into like the folklore and medicinal uses and values um, for the herbs. So I'm using a fruit. So uh, I guess that's not really an herb, but you know, anyway. So lemon and ginger, and I, so both Cancer and Capricorn have a tendency towards melancholy and like when out of balance, a uh, tendency towards melancholy, stomach upset, um, some inflammation of the joints, uh, different Capricorn rules the skeletal system and cancer rules the chest and breast area but i think it also includes the stomach elbow joints and other areas of the body could be the kidney function anyway i i'm reading up on all this stuff i'm not an expert uh but it, i find it really interesting 
I'm going to go and just read off a couple of the common ailments for Capricorn, since we're starting with Capricorn, with the new moon. Okay. Capricorn is a cardinal earth sign, and in the tarot, it is represented by the devil card. Um, and it often it's, it rules the, the skeletal structure, and including your teeth, I believe, and, or including the teeth. It rules the skeletal structure, including the teeth, and can have a tendency towards melancholy and a lack of creativity and being very st structured and driven in that direction. Um, so being in a cardinal earth sign, Capricorn has a lot of drive and is a leader in the realm of bringing that order into reality, but it can also feel restricting and create a lot of problems. And so um, stomach upsets one, uh, you know, malfunctions within the body. And so I picked lavender and ginger for both the signs because they both can help with uh, inflammation. So like joint inflammation and they both help with stomach upset and they also um, are good for like helping with circulation and lemon is good for colds and, you know, boosting the immune system. Um, yeah, so that's why I picked those for Capricorn. And then now that I already covered <laughs> the what the the remedies are for with lemon and ginger, they can be applied to cancer as well, because cancer has a tendency to be grouchy and irritable, um, have issues with melancholy or forgetting about self-care and being resentful um, because Capricorn is this, the mother sign and uh, Capricorn, or not Capricorn, Cancer is the mother sign of the Zodiac uh, and can have issues around self-care and um, being able to express the deep, the big emotions that are held inside. So uh, I, I was thinking lemon is just a fun, uplifting fruit and the smell can, for me anyway, it can brighten my mood, even if it's for just a moment. Uh, and ginger is the same. Uh, so here we go. Since these signs both have these tendencies towards um, just being melancholy and kind of cold and not outwardly um, expressing themselves uh, emotionally and for what, whatever. I don't need to say this. I'm going to, I think I'm going to cut this out. Long story short, I picked some fiery, zippy, sunny uh, fruits and herbs to put into this mead to counteract some of the imbalances or I don't want to say the the symptoms of imbalances within Capricorn and Cancer. So there it is. And now that I've talked and I've, I've probably cut a whole bunch of this out, <laughs> whatever I was just saying, uh, now that I'm done talking, I'm going to go ahead and put my yeast into the slurry because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's, it's like room temperature. So, or not body temperature, it's body temperature. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So here's my EC1118. I'm just going to drop, oop, I'm going to spill some of it on myself and then I'm going to pour some in here. the wrapper in the garbage and I'll use my little spoon to stir this up a little bit because it's not getting all stuck to the side. Okay, happy little yeasties. I'm going to let that set for a few minutes. I usually just pour the yeast in, so I'm not going to let it set for too long, but let those guys wake up and I'll be right back. 
forgot to stir this around, make sure it's not too cold. All right, I'm back with my big funnel. Hi. Okay, I'm back with my big funnel and I'm gonna just pour this good old slurry in there. I'm gonna swish this a little bit, put the lid on. I'm not gonna do a, get some oxygen in there. I'm not gonna do a full on shake cause I don't have a solid plug on this. Ooh, time for the gravity reading. I, um, last time I used ginger for mead, which is only one other time, I used a whole hand for a gallon, whole hand of ginger, and I fermented on it so I didn't make a tea and this time I'm just trying something different I'll, I'm most likely going to add some to secondary oh, and let's see how high the gravity reading is with all the sugar I put or honey I put in here wow okay Oh no, this this might be insanely sweet. We'll see. Maybe it'll just be a higher ABV one. Oh dang. One. I went a little crazy. I went a little crazy with um, just just at a glance. I'm pretty sure I went a little crazy with the honey. Trying to turn this to where I need it. Right here. Right here. Yeah. This is, <sighs> okay, this is really sweet. Well, I mean, I did use the EC1118, so those bad boys can eat right through this honey, the sugar, and make lots of alcohol. So I'm not worried about that. This, one's, this one might be a little on the higher end ABV-wise because the starting gravity is 1.15. Maybe I could add a little bit more water. I have a two gallon bucket. I could put this in there and add water and reduce the, the starting gravity. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just see how this all plays out. Because uh, sometimes it could be a pleasant surprise. Last step, we need to put the airlock and bung. And I put some of the star sand in here. And yeah, just gonna stick that in there. Put that there. Okay, that, we are all set. I'm gonna put this in my closet and I will be step feeding the yeast. So tomorrow I'll give it about a quarter teaspoon. I know you're supposed to do it all in weight, but it's just easier for me to use a, a teaspoon. I'll be putting a quarter teaspoon of Fermade O in this uh, starting tomorrow. I'll do that for three days, and then I'll do one more around the seventh day. So I am going to go ahead and set this in my closet, and I will be back in a couple weeks to rack it uh, around the full moon in Cancer. And in that video, I will rack it, stabilize it, uh, if that's what I want to do at that point. I, With all the sugar in here, I doubt it'll be ready, but we'll see. Um, so 
rack it, possibly stabilize it, and then I'll get into the folklore and the medicinal uses for each of the main ingredients, lemon and ginger. Thank you for watching. I hope this video is helpful and I'll see you next time. Thanks.